I don't, you know, I don't like to do it. I, sometimes if I feel strongly about a work like I did Old Man, I think it's, 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 it's a privilege and a pleasure. Um, it's not easy. You have to first of all get inside someone else's psyche, so to speak. And uh, then you have to be careful you're not too respectful because there's this fine balance that you're not going to help it if, you, um, if you're too reverential. You know, you've got to somehow, uh, there's a point where you have to say, well, now I have to take this over. This really is my work now in that sense and um, go forward. But it's an interesting balance. I, I can't do it if I don't like the essential work. I have done it, but it's not been a happy time for me. Um, I usually, you know, I mean, I usually find something that fascinates me, that I don't feel that the original author has, that I would maybe put a little more emphasis on it than he has. For instance, all of Geraldine's scenes, I added a quite a lot of dialogue to them. found imagery that Faulkner didn't use but I thought in, 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 without violating his style. And he was very pleased, I think, with the result. I never met him. I didn't want to, but I d d did four things of his. But uh, he allowed me to share the theatrical copyright, which, in other words, you could do it, but you have to get my permission, his permission, to do my version, which is unheard of and very... And the same with Tomorrow, which I later did. Why, why didn't you want to meet him? Well, I, I felt, first of two things, I felt if I met him, I had an almost an inordinate amount of respect for him as it was, and then I'd be intimidated because then I would constantly, it, was, it felt easier for me to be impersonal. Then I wouldn't be looking over my shoulder or thinking, and for instance, in Tomorrow, I did a really a very bold thing, something I've never done, and I, they offered it to me, I think mainly, it was Herbert Brodkin offered that to me, because of the success of the old man, probably. And, uh, and I really didn't know how to do it, and then, but there was a paragraph uh, describing um, what she called a black-complected woman. He didn't even mention her name. But the child she gives birth to kind of is the focal point of the story and is the way that the narrative continues. And I fell in love with this woman. I don't know how. I just fell in love with her. I gave her a name. I called her Sarah Eubanks, and I made the whole first act about her relationship with Fentry, who was the part that finally Bob, um, Bob DeVal played. But in, in, for not Playhouse 90, uh, uh, Richard Boone played it. And I was very nervous. I thought, hey, God, I don't know what the folks going to say about this. Again, he liked it, and again allowed me to share the copyright. So, if you do my version, you have to, you know, ask both our permissions. Um, but it's not—it's painful to do this, you know, because you constantly don't want to violate, and you don't want to. Um, um, I think it's. I think I don't say that stylistically we are greatly alike, but I think there's enough kinship among certain Southern writers, that we can easily go back and forth and with some security. 